Uh, now I'm honored to introduce Dr. Uh, Mariko Okada. He, uh, she's a specialist of Japanese theater history. Uh, Dr. Okada is also Associate Professor of Faculty of Humanities, J.F. Oberlin University, Tokyo, where she teaches uh, pre-modern Japanese, uh, Japanese literature. She was Toyota Professor in Residence at Center for Japanese Studies for the academic year from 2012 to 2013. She received uh, her PhD from Waseda University in 2011 and in 2013 published book, The Birth of Kyomai, Inoue Ryu Dance in the 19th Century Kyoto. And I brought the book here. And um, <coughs> uh, this is a seminal publication, received many prestigious awards, including the Santri Prize for Social Sciences and Humanities, the Hayashiya Incentive Award in Study of Performance History, and the Kawatake Award from Japanese Society for Theater Research. And about this book, a uh, theater critic, uh, Mas Masa Shimura, praised the book and uh, praised as the epoch-making research in the study of performance history, which changed the common view of Kyoto dance as a dance style performed in a secretive private setting of Kyoto's entertainment district. Based on Do Dr. Okada's careful reading of extant performance programs and diaries uh, written by aristocrats, the book reveals that the Kyoto Dance School had close relationships with other forms of entertainment, such as no kabuki puppet theater and popular dance, and strive to transform themselves at the wake of Japan's modernization. She's also the author of several English articles, including Before Making Heritage, internationalization of geisha in the Meiji period, uh, which was uh, part of the Making uh, Japanese Heritage, uh, edited by Christoph Buhrmann and Rupert Cox in 2009. Her talk of today considers the effect of the important intangible, intangible cultural property, or um, more well known as a uh, uh, living national treasure system, and the Japanese government's efforts to preserve traditional skills in the case of performi performing arts, which includes uh, kabuki actors. And this would be a nice ki kind of complimentary topic to uh, our speaker two weeks ago, uh, Mr. Tsutsui from uh, Bunkacho. So um, and uh, please welcome then uh, to doc uh, Dr. Mariko Okada for actually her third appearance here. Thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Mariko Okada, and it is my uh, great pleasure to come back here and to give a talk at CJS and lecture. Um, my almost two years at the University of Michigan was a gem um, with a comfortable academic environment and also plenty time to study. And that made me a great progress in academ academic field. So um, before coming to Michigan, I had nothing in uh, my career, but the CGS community gave me a lot. So uh, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to CGS community. And uh, I also thank you to Natsu uh, who made me come back here and everyone who, who has been supporting the exhibition and this talk. Thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to talk about what made me deliver this uh, presentation of this topic. Um, as introduced, uh, Natsu and I uh, have prepared this exhibition since I was here from uh, the year 2013, maybe. And after I got back home, I made contact with Shochiku people. Shochiku is the private company uh, with producing kabuki. And I also had the opportunity to see Kabuki after almost a two year blank. And actually, uh, Kabuki was not interested as it had been when I was a student. And I think uh, there are a, a lot of important elements were missing in transition from former generation to the new today's one. And of course, uh, the several famous kabuki actors were happened to pass away uh, in their 50s. Uh, it's uh, really a pity. So naturally, there was a gap between generations. And last year, I was watching a TV program 
uh, which was kabuki documentary. And there, the young actor, kabuki actor, was practicing dance <coughs> with the video on his smartphone. So, <laughs> so why does he need to study with video instead of elder actor um, personally? So that makes me interested in a cultural preservation system, and I thought maybe the system doesn't work properly. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to <laughs> wear my glass, so I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and moreover, I have conducted research on one of the schools of Nihonbuyo, as Natsu introduced, so, uh, which has been uh, performed at Gion, uh, the most famous geisha quarter in Kyoto. So please at the screen, uh, the school name is Inoveryu. The picture of the left is the cover of monthly magazine called Ningen Kokuho, Keeping National Treasure in English, of which the cover features the fourth headmaster of the school. And as I studied the history of the school, I found that this dance school is quite deeply related with the Japanese system of preservation of cultural property. And she was recognized as so-called living national treasure for the first time in 1955. And because of the recognition, she earned a good name and reputation. So according to this situation, I was interested and I have written an article on this topic. So adding to which, the present headmaster, who is a granddaughter of a former headmaster, whom you can see on the right, was recognized as a living national treasure last year. So basically, the Inove school has been likely to be described as an intangible cultural property, maybe because two masters were living national treasure, or the dance has been practiced by geisha that are disappearing profession from the contemporary Japan. Or they have settled in Kyoto, which has been the cultural capital of Japan for a thousand years. The dance has been treated not a mere entertainment, but the cultural heritage, which is at the crisis point of vanishing. <laughs> so let me brief summarize the main point of my paper today. So I put my uh, presentation titled Traditionalizing Preservation, because I thought cultural preservation itself has become like tradition. So tradition is often defined as the events practiced repeatedly during a certain period, and sometimes the purpose has been lost. So in my opinion, Japanese system of cultural preservation is somehow similar to the traditional event. So every year, new, new living national treasure is announced, but it is not so exciting news in general. So people accept the announcement uncritically just because it has been repeated for more than 60 years. So given this current reality, I have three points in my presentation. So first, I would like to introduce present situation of Japanese system of protection of important intangible cultural property and pose three major problem of the system. And the second thing is the history of the system. I will discuss how Japanese cultural property protection policy was established and how it has transformed since its start started. And in the third place, I will argue what kind of change can be seen in the field. So before going into the main issue, I will start with what kind of Japanese traditional performing arts have been object, objects of governmental preservation. The pre-modern Japan have had uh, various, uh, various performing arts and the strong influence of China. So among them, while some vanished, some survived. The performing arts, which have continuously been performed, are considered as intangible cultural properties today. So there are eight genres, which are gagaku, nogaku, bundaku, kabuki, and kumiodori, ongaku, buyo, engei. So among them, seven genres, which gagaku is excluded, have the living national treasure today. So this is the list of important intangible cultural properties recognized by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology based on the law for the protection of cultural properties. 
So I, I know that you cannot read, and neither do I, <laughs> so, but just to count. So there is two big groups, so performing arts and craft techniques. And green and blue shows group recognition. So we will count this, so one, two, three, four, five, and here is six to 12, and 13. So 13 groups of performing arts are recognized today. So as for individuals, 38 items of performing arts are des designated, and 56 holders are recognized as important intangible cultural properties. And the term living national treasure is a popular term for these holders of important intangible cultural property. The term is not formally used in the official document, but the Agency of Cultural Affairs also use it as so-called living national treasure. And this term is created by mass media few years after the first recognition of holders. So before establishment of its protection, Japan used to have important tangible cultural properties and also national treasures at the highest rank of them. So therefore, after the model of national treasure, the term was created. So as well as living national treasure, Japanese system of protecting important intangible cultural properties has also coined new legal term, waza. And waza can be translated to skill, technique, art, or craft, which means the special ability to do something very well. The term uh, waza can often be seen in the document issued by Agency for Cultural Affairs. So even English, they try to use original term. In 1993, English white paper of Ministry of Education, Culture, Pro Sports, Science, and Technology, in um, uh, intangible cultural properties are explained as cited. So it says intangible cultural properties are the very skills, waza, um, displayed by individuals or by a group of individuals who have attained mastery of them. So this sentence shows the properties can be replaced by the term waza. So the holders are those who possess these skills. Because skills are intangible, they are designated through holders. Uh, it's like a storage for the uh, the tangible properties. So the holders are those who possess this, these skills because, um, so please look at the list again. So I put this, uh, the beginning in English. So each item has one plural, uh, one or plural individual holders or group of holders. It means that gagaku, is designated as the important intangible cultural properties through the officers of Shikigakubu, and that Nogaku is designated through 11 individuals and member of Association for Japanese Nogaku Performers. So let's go into the list. The genre Nogaku has six items for individuals. Nogaku, known as No, is the stylized theater which is developed in 14th century. So Nogaku performers are divided into four categories, the Shitekata, main actors, Wakikata, support actors, and Hayashikata, musicians, and the Kyogenkata, Kyogen actors. So each category is never mixed, and their skills are also very different from each other. Hayashikata has four types of musicians who play their own instrument, the flute player, the shoulder drum player, the hip drum player, and the stick drum player. So in total, there are seven categories of no performance. However, the number of designation are six items, you remember? And then you find that the musician of, uh, who plays the shoulder drum is missing. So, So, so this is missing, and why? So does the shoulder drum play performer uh, have especially low value? So 
Of course, this can never happen. The shoulder drum player used to be one of the seven items of Nogaku. The holder, Soba Hiroshi, passed away last December at the age of 90. The position became vacant afterwards, and in accordance with the individuals, the, items, the item was eliminated from the list. The designation of important intangible cultural property terminates when the eligible individuals are dead. So what do you think happened next? Once a certain performing art was considered as important, it, is it acceptable not to be designated after the holder passed away? The answer is no. So please remember the explanation of the system explained in English white paper. So designation of important intangible cultural properties set an ultimate goal that these skills may be passed on to the next generation. So once the art uh, was designated, the art should be passed. Then the next holder should be fostered in the system. Now, after death of Nogaku holders, uh, the Agency for Cultural Affairs must be pressured to recognize next holders of the lost item. Since protection in the primary goal of the system in order to protect a certain property, the recognition of the successor is inevitable. Please think about tangible cultural asset. Once the important cultural property is designated, if the storage is lost, is it it is necessary to have the next storage to make the property secure from damage. So sooner or later, the successor who has been fostered in the system might be recognized. So all skills can be theoretically inherited forever in the system. In order to recognize a new holder of important intangible cultural properties, the minister consults the Cultural Council, uh, then the council requests research to the expert panel and based on the report of the expert panel the council report to the minister the panels consist of 31 experts new properties are designated once a year the system looks to be carefully constructed so however there are not outside evaluation system for for, for this for this system so recently the Agency for Cultural Affairs entrusted private organization to investigate research on evaluation measure of cultural policy, and its report can be seen on the internet site of the agency. However, the evaluation, seem, evaluation seems not to have been done. Of course, it is very difficult to measure levels of achievement. But it should be necessary to review the past policy in order to build a future plan. So otherwise, the system will be carried out in a desultory way. I think this is a really crucial problem of the system. Now, I would like to introduce you the gap between the general understanding and the governmental policy of the holders of important intangible cultural property. So I will show you an example from my research. So among my research, I have I also have conducted participant observation, so I mean I myself has become a disciple of the, this dance school. So as I told you, my master, fifth head of this school, was recognized as a living national treasure last year. So her predecessor, who, who was her actual grandmother, was also recognized as a holder, so she can be said to be fostered in the system. So when this news was released, people in the school were delighted and congratulated to the master. And last December, we had the big party of a thousand guests was held to celebrate her accomplishment. So in this way, uh, being a living national treasure is generally understood as honorary position, such as award-winning artist or recipient of the decoration. However, the officer of the Agency for Cultural Affairs told me that the recognition imposes an obligation to pass down their waza to the next generation. The living national treasure is not a mere in, in, invaluable person, but individual certified as preserver of the important intangible cultural properties. 
So the general acceptance of the system contradicts the government's cultural policy. Uh, let me talk uh, details of the Living National Treasure System. So once you are recognized, you are semi-annually subsidized 1 million yen, which is approximately 10,000 US dollars now. So you can spend them only for fostering successor or training yourself. You need to draw up a plan to get subsidy uh, and also submit reports. If your reports will be uh, your report will be checked by agency for cultural affairs, and if the unsuitable expense is allocated, you have to modify your report. And including the amount of ten thousand dollars for half a year, the treatment of living national treasure is extremely simple. So almost, oh, sorry, what happened? So um, <coughs> almost 15 years ago, the plain life of living national treasure became a public topic. The living national treasure of Bundaku Puppet Theater, Yoshida Tamao, was shot in TV program and living in a small room of nursing home and commuting by train. So in accordance with small subsidies, the obligation is also limited. The required obligation is to improve their own skill and su train successors. There are no restrictions to other activities. Before they are leaving National Treasure, they are artists. So they sometimes try to make new works, and they are not mere guardians of the classic work. The new works can be de deviated substantially from classic works. But the system of living national treasure does not have regulation for the entire activity of the holders. So in summary of the present situation of the system, more than 50 holders of the 38 items are recognized. So they are annually subsidized 2 million yen in order to polish their own skill and foster successors. There are three ma main problems related to the system adequacy of the amount of subsidies, continuous administration of miniaturely uh, divided categories, and the absence of evaluation organization. So let's look back into the history of the system. As I mentioned, the protection of the intangible cultural property was clearly stated in the law for protection of cultural property, Bunka Zai Hogoho, and enacted in 1950. Intangible cultural property was added as objects of protected and selection system was adapted following tangible cultural properties. So four years later, there was an amendment and the national designation system was adopted for intangible cultural properties in the same manner of tangible cultural property. The Asahi newspaper report on January, 90, January 29 in 1955 says, uh, which is uh, with excitement, quote, um, for the important intangible cultural property, holders of the skill of art, namely individual person, will be recognized at the same time the excellent skill and art will be designated as distinct from tangible cultural property, end quote. And uh, as for subsidies, it seems to be still argued in 1955. The, mm, so uh, the same newspaper said, uh, the quote, the drastic measure for protection will be taken to the holders of performing arts, honoring the person in public. Rec recording secret skills or representation of acting or playing or making their acting and playing public, supporting them to foster successor, paying an instruction pension, reducing and the exemption from tax on the recitals or uh, planned, end quote. So however, financial assistance have not materialized for several years. Committee for the Protection of Cultural Properties, which is the predecessor uh, organization of the Agency for Cultural Affairs, has kept trying to pay pension to holders, 
but the budget has not been approved. And in 1959, one of the holders of craft has committed suicide due to the difficulty of earning the living food. This incident seems to be shocking and mobilized public opinion into support holders financially. Asahi newspaper on December 30th, 1963 reports the budget of 15 million yen was approved as financial incentive for living national treasure. The amount will be distributed to 41 holders. According to the book of 50-year history of law of the law for protection of cultural properties written by Agency of Cultural Affairs from the fiscal year of 1964 to 1971, the amount of subsidies uh, divided into three, three depending on their category and their skills. And the holders of the performing art received 200,000 yen in 1964. After 1972, all holders had received equivalent amount of subsidies without exception. Uh, revised several times from 1988 to today, the amount has set as 2 million yen. So as for the classification in earlier times, the committee did not seem to deliberate the category of performing arts. So please take a look at the screen. So at the first, 12 holders were recognized in 1955. Uh, their title was arbitrary, arbitrary. So three months after the first recognition, second recognition was announced. And the two holders with new titles was added, were added. And the third recognition was announced uh, five years after. So among six new holders, uh, five are uh, selected from new category. And surprisingly, Japan's most famous traditional performing arts, Kabuki, has only one holder out of 20. So Bando Mitsugoro here. And at first, the large classification of performing arts, such as Nogaku or Bunraku, did not exist. So considering this large classification, they are extremely awkward. So gagaku, nogaku, bunraku, kabuki, and kumiodori are the unique noun of the certain stylized performing arts. On the contrary, ongaku and buyo and enge are general nouns which are translated to music, dance, vaudeville, or variety show. So five unique nouns consist of elements of music and dance, too. So these eight large classifications do not function well. For example, Bando Mitsugoro Sevens was a kabuki actor, and not also as excellent, uh, and he was uh, also an excellent kabuki dancer. But he was recognized in 1955 under the item of kabuki dance, uh, as we seen uh, in the last slide, and he usually appeared on the kabuki stage, but he was classified as a living national treasure of dance. So if you look at the list of today's holder, you might notice big portion of the music category here. And the uh, development of Japanese traditional music is very complicated, and each small school of music has constructed its own headmaster system, Iemoto Seido. And in briefly, this system brought effective preservation of consistent art artistic style in the school, and also stable financial income to the head family by strong centralizing power. In addition, the music was well received in various occasions in pre-modern Japan. Headmaster system and abundance of the music opportunities made each school have their own characteristic and variable repertoires. As a result, many schools are scattered in the way. Most of them are vocal music ac accompanied by shamisen, so that is why most of music items has both singer and shamisen player. So similarly with the example of nogaku, uh, segmentalized, mm -hmm. 
segmentalized uh, classification brings kind of automation of the recognition. Grading of the performers will be prom promoted in the school, and after the death of the head, the next might be recognized. Uh, the balance among schools or categories is weighed heavily. And now we realize the system has become nothing different from the headmaster system. So in other words, uh, in other words, Japanese traditional performance was powerful enough to take the protection system in their tradition. <coughs> in this aspect, I dare say uh, the system of protection of the cultural property was traditionalized in the 60 years of operation. The larger I large issue of the system is mentioned before, absence of evaluation organization. So nobody rebuilt the system yet. At first, there were holders of the theater of drama, uh, the Kitamura Rokuro and Hanayagi Shotaro were recognized as holders under the item of Simpa on Nagata. Simpa was the popular theater developed mainly in early 20th century and started not so old, but it was already traditional when the holders were recognized. So, however, the first living national treasure of Shinpa passed away in 1961 and the second in 1965. Both passed away soon after the protection system was launched. As I mentioned, in the first 10 years, recognition was established, but related conditions, including subsidies, were not yet decided. So we do not know it was because of their early death or an inadequate system. The skill of Simpa on Nagata banished ever from the list of important intangible cultural properties. And if you look carefully at the repertoires of the certain school, a certain amount of repertoires banished even after the protection system was launched. So in Inoue School of Kyoto Dance published the anthology of the text of their repertoires in 1965. So this book shows more than 250 dance songs which were practiced at that time. However, among them, more than 50 repertoires have not performed in public during 50 years. They might be banished. So of course, the then headmaster made an effort to pass her skill or knowledge down to the next generation. So I saw that she transformed one of the children's um, I saw that the, she transformed one of the children's dance um, in a danger into the dance of grown-ups uh, with my own eyes. And in spite of her exertion, this dance was not performed afterwards. So moreover, there are a lot of dances which seems to lose its music or choreography. So in addition to missing, small change can be seen in many dances. The number of dances, uh, number of dances, props, costumes, backdrops, choreography, abbreviation of certain part, there are a lot of elements to be changed. However, this minor transformation inevitably comes with performing arts. Sometimes it can be said as a variation, but sometimes it could be a definite transformation. Uh, the reason must be always carelessness or unsuccessful, su unsuccessful succession. So performers or instructors always try to find better way to show their performance to the audience, even if it is the classical art. So please remember the white paper. Uh, it indicated the possibility of change in content and um, content and form, and also said traditional Japanese skills may be polished and improved. So improvement can be counted as change. Then we, can, we, have, we have to pose the question, so what the original skills was? Uh, in other words, what was the authenticity of performing arts designated as important intangible cultural properties? So even after the governmental protection was launched for important intangible cultural properties, entire skills of certain items were banished. Repertoires of certain performance were banished and transformed. 
So when drastic change of society is taken into account, these changes must have been inevitable. However, these changes also can be regarded as a strategy of survival. So in order to continue, performers have to choose carefully what, is, what to discard. On the other hand, uh, they have to create new work, not to lose audience interest. So it's like saying that transformation was invol involved in uh, protection of art. So before closing, uh, I would like to introduce the idea that the new work of the performer can be the key to approach authenticity. So when I was in graduate school, I help, helped Professor uh, Emeritus of Tokyo National University of Fine Arts and Music, Yokomichi Mario, to collect information of the new works of Nogaku. So there are no numerous attempts to appeal to the public for their new production. So most of the attempts seem to fail and because they have never restaged. So I felt that all such trials were a waste of time and maybe I was very young <laughs> at the time. So, but Professor Yokomichi said to construct a new drama from the scratch uh, should contribute people who are involved to perform classical work. So because all the classical work was also created at one time in the past. Thank you very much. So, yes. Yes. Different schools of the. Uh, yes, no, no theater. Um, the Hayashikata or Shitekata contains several schools. So, yeah, Shitekata have five schools, and Wakikata is now three schools. And Hayashikata also have several schools. Because uh, why they have school, uh, so many schools means um, in Edo period, pre-modern times, the Kanze school has their own ha hayashikata, all musicians. So originally, there were five schools for each music instrument. Mm. No, so if the government designate the ka, ka, no performer in a sitekata, they pick the maybe best performer from the several school. So not only can they have a living national treasure. So it depends. more than one school, but it depends. Um, uh, I asked the people at the cultural, uh, the Agency of Cultural Affairs, so because the budget is limited, so their designation is also limited. So if you have a very um, grand master of no theater, se several no theater grand master, but even the budget is limited, so you can designate only, say, two or three shitekata actors. So at that time, y you don't know which one, uh, the, the from which school they will take, but so it depends. And what I was saying is about the music tradition. So for the music tradition, like if you take the uh, nas living national treasure from Miyazono Bushi, 
And always Miyazo Nobushi has a one living national treasure. So it means it's like a headmaster system. So always headmaster of Miyazo Nobushi is a living national treasure. And also Kyomai in a way too. But uh, for Kabuki or no actor, it's um, quite different because there are many performers and you can pick the best one from the many schools. I, did I answer your question? Okay, <laughs> sort of, thank you. <laughs> uh, yes? Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, so the water is uh, not, so usually we also, uh, Japanese, in a Japanese language, water is n the no normal term, but um, usually we put kanji, Chinese character for the water in a common Japanese conversation, but uh, um, when I saw the public, uh, the book of the Agency of Cultural Affairs, uh, always it is written with hiragana, waza, and so it, uh, so it must be the uh, created word for the, um, for the system of preservation of prop this uh, intangible cultural property. And so according to the, explanation of the cultural agency the it is waza is so they said they don't designate the ningen koko the living national treasure they designate only waza which can be seen in, in uh, holders of the the uh, holders uh, which is uh, also at, um, called by a uh, code with living national treasure. So living national treasure is a holder of water, so like a storage of water. Did, did I answer your question? <laughs> so the relationship is something and the you know, something you can settle in it. Okay. Do you have any other question? I don't think they have criteria of the evaluation. Uh, uh, actually, they don't have evaluation system. And I think it's really, of course, it must be very difficult to evaluate this kind of system. So even the young Kabuki actor was practicing with video. M maybe the video was uh, had a financial support from the this uh, system and actually today's living national treasure uh, bando tamasaburo uh, he is he got money from this system and he make a video he make a recording of his waza and so now maybe he found a lot of kabuki actor is hopeless but he he maybe he hoped that someday there will be the another kabuki actor who can um, who, you know, who can learn trained with his video where which is now recording recorded
So it depends on the uh, living national treasure who ha how many apprentices they have. But um, so some of them have a, for example, my master who is doing Kyomai, she has maybe 100, of, uh, 100 apprentices. But mm, it's quite difficult to pass the their skills to the one of the apprentice because uh, I think the big reason is the social change. Today, nobody wears kimono in their daily life. So, you know, not so many people get accustomed to move in uh, kimono, kim traditional clothes. So that makes the today's people difficult in moving in a uh, traditional Crows, and there's more many incident, right? And it so and the most big things is uh, you cannot need to remember the movement, right? You can always review with your smartphone. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of stuff are really big change from the maybe six sixty sixty years ago. Yes. Uh, you had a uh, question. To what degree is this system about domination? Uh, do they make a very explicit provisions about preserving Japanese identity? And if it's po point of this is to preserve Japanese identity, and so that's the first part of my question. Mm -hmm. And then, as it, does the system, and I'm sorry for my ignorance not knowing this, but do they include anything like Aizawas or Kagawanas or, or things that are ambiguous to Japanese? Yeah. Um, the first question for the Japanese-ness, um, today, that kind of uh, um, the point of view becomes bigger and bigger. But I don't think, you know, first, uh, when this system was established in 1955, of course, it was uh, after the World War II, and um, so there was a lot of damage in uh, Japanese art and also the land and so they were the people established this system was thinking about to preserve the Japanese culture but uh, I don't see the that kind of nationalistic idea in the first meeting <laughs> meeting record of the um, meeting for the of the cultural uh, uh, agency for cultural <laughs> affairs but um, and also maybe you saw it the selection is very n n arbitrary so you can pick no gaku so many and there's not so many kabuki kabuki must be the most popular performing arts at, at that time too but uh, so the people selected first or second national uh, living national treasure are thinking about the maybe level of the waza or skills and I don't think they are thinking too much about the nationalist national culture and for Ainu and Okinawa, so these days they are uh, living national treasure of Kumiyodori, the Okinawan dance, but uh, I don't think they have in uh, with uh, Ainu dance or music yet. So uh, yes. This one. Yeah, I thought that was really like cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 ah, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Um, 
actually, for this production, the center is my master. Uh, she is. She has been trained in uh, in our school in a uh, <laughs> classical dance for 40, 50 years. And but the other dancers are um, trained in the modern dance te uh, techniques. So it is completely different from each between each other. <laughs> so I it my it was so for uh, for this production the center the the main dancer is her and the she and the others are all some kind of choir something and so it the this production can be because the central dancer is doing something different from all others. But uh, if there's some, maybe two, if there's two dancers from one from the classical Japanese art, one from the modern dance, maybe it must be like an awkward <laughs> production, I, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Okay, go to I totally agree with you. Nowadays, politicians also inherit yeah. their <laughs> fathers. So uh, maybe same here. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> and uh, but um, yes, it's true. But I think today, the more blood lineage uh, becomes important after World War Two, and uh, maybe before the war. Um, it was quite usual to to get the talented other kids to their family because adopted. So maybe it was really important for them to keep their family. And it doesn't mean pick your son, pick your actual son. And for example, in Norway school also has no family uh, blood lineage from second grand mas second master to third and also fourth. So one and two, uh, second, uh, first and second is uh, um, aunt and niece, but uh, two, second and third had nothing, and the third and fourth had nothing. So, and also many, uh, this same things can be said to the uh, Kabuki actors too. So. Maybe now becomes it more traditionalized or blood concerned um, society now. Yes. Bunkacho. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So I think there are many variety of the、uh, Bunkacho people. Like some of them are kind of specialists of the、um, certain art, and some of them are just、uh, quite bu bureaucratic、uh, doing job. And so, and also, and there's no, no official way. To join the Living National Treasure System. Okay, I, will, I would like to be a Living National Treasure, but、uh, I heard that、uh, you know, if you are a Bunkacho person, you have to welcome many people, many artists who want to be, you know, to who want to have. Subsidies for not only for living national treasure system, but maybe you know, doing performance in abroad or something like that. So there's no official way, but if you are interested, you can visit some officers at the Bunkacho and <laughs> so, gi、uh, yeah, maybe gift. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, and no contract. <laughs> so, okay, so yes. So,、um, this, so th these systems are based on the Bunkadai Hokoho, which was established in 1950, so just five years after the World War II. And the, have you read the Mishima Yukio's Kinkakuji? And、uh, I, I think the Kinkakuji was burned out after the World wo War. And、um, so I heard that it was so make a really shock in the、uh, uh, public in Japan. And so that incident、uh, accelerated the,、uh, establishing the system of、uh, protecting cultural properties. And also,、um, the, the for, the, for example, the performing art. The performers are also, you know, they are having a really difficult life in under the war, and some are dead because of like starvation or something like that. And so, after the World War II, they have the Japanese people、mm, were, were really motivated to protect their own culture. And maybe that is the only way to, to support their, how do you say, their self -conf confidence in,、uh, um, after World War II. So, and at that time, if the newspaper, newspaper reported、uh, always described this new system very enthusiastically, so、um, that's why,、um, so. This system was,、uh, how do you say, the, the system was challenging, but still, you know, people are, have much interest in this new creation of the system. But so the in the beginning, it was really good, I guess. But、uh, after a while, it becomes kind of a, a annual event, and nobody have much. Interest, cons、uh, much concerned in、uh, 
system or newspaper report. And so, of course, this system was created uh, in a big relation with the uh, World War Two, and so gradually the system becomes more established, like many categories are settled, and then it becomes more, uh, I, as I said, like traditionalized, and and it doesn't have a uh, practical like, effect on the inheriting the, the weather skills. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I, I will close my presentation. Thank you very much for coming.